you. Our, our verse today, um, we're coming from John 14, 27. John 14, 27. And yeah, y'all on it. Y'all is all on it from the beginning to the worship. This is the, these are the words of Jesus. Jesus said, and I really want you to soak these words in. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Can you just sit in those words of Jesus? Just read it again. Lord, we thank you for your word. God, we pray that you would speak to us in this time. Speak to our hearts. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Our subject today is called, You Can Have a Peace of My Love. You can have a peace of my love. Peace. Yes, he already does. she's already quoting the great prophets, the evangelists, the trio guy. When they said those prophetic words, you can have a piece of my love. That's a cold song. Anybody ever listen to the words of that? That's a cold song. You can have a piece, not even a, no, I'm talking about the words. The words is cold. A piece, that's all I get? A, okay, that's a whole nother subject. But today we changing it up. It's not a piece. You can have a piece, a piece, a piece, a piece of my love. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, see, you know, a piece. I might have been in the way. There it is. You can have a piece of my love. Um, our world, everybody knows, if you're looking at the news, if you're just living, that our world is looking for peace. We living in crazy times. We're living in, in the times where things that are, were unimaginable, things you just saw in movies, just things you saw in video games. Things are happening so rapidly, back to back. We're still in a pandemic. Thank y'all for who are wearing masks, thank you. We're still in a pandemic, and our world is looking for peace. How many people in this room, are you looking for peace? You're longing for peace, you got a situation, you got, don't be ashamed if you're looking, you like, God, I need peace. There's something that's bothering, I got a situation. Lord, I need peace. I'm tired of, I can't go to sleep. My mind is racing. I'm anxious, I'm nervous. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what the future holds. I keep hearing all these negative thoughts telling me I'm not gonna make it. How many people need peace? And if I were to ask you, what if you got the peace you were looking for, what would it look for? What would it, what would it look like in, in your life if you got that thing that you needed? What would that look like? What would your life look like? How would your life change? If I asked you to draw a picture of peace, what picture would, would, would you paint? If I told you just start imagining, what does peace look like? What, what, what would a vacation of peace look like, right? Yes, what are you throwing your picture in Bahamas? I'm, I'm you know. I'm picturing, yeah, yeah, I'm picturing by the water, I'm thinking hammocks, I'm thinking camping, I don't know, Hawaii. Just thinking, put in your mind, what does peace, what would it look like? If you were to paint a picture, what would that picture look like? She said, I'll be all by myself. <laughs> I hear you sit on a desert island, all deserted. Well, um, this, this reminds me of a story. There once lived a king who announced the pride that he would give a prize to an artist that could paint the best picture depicting peace. Many great painters sent the king several of their best art pieces. One of the pictures among the various masterpieces was a picture of a calm lake. And we have a picture of this, a calm lake, perfectly mirroring peaceful towering snow-capped mountains. Overhead was clear blue skies with fluffy clouds. The picture was perfect. Most of the people who viewed the picture of peace from various artists thought that this was among the best of them all, like this should win. But when the king announced the winner, everyone was shocked. The picture which won the prize had mountains too 
but it was rugged and bare. The sky looked very angry and there was lightning. This did not look like a peaceful picture at all. It didn't look like at all. It looked like the artist had mistakenly submitted his painting depicting the storm rather than peace. But if anyone looked closely at the painting, he could see a tiny brush growing in the cracks in the rock. In the bush, a mother bird had built her nest. In the midst of the rush of the angry weather, the bird sat on her nest with peace. See, yeah, I think we have the wrong picture of peace. I think we have the wrong picture of what peace looks like in our lives, and this is what makes us feel frustrated. This is what makes us feel angry with God, right? Peace doesn't mean to be in a place where there is no noise or trouble. Peace, it means to be in the midst of all the chaos and be still and have a calm heart. Real peace is a state of mind, not the state of surroundings. See that mother bird and her calm, despite her chaotic surroundings, indeed was the best representation of peace. So what does peace look like for you? What does it look like for you? For many people, peace could mean the absence of conflict or trouble, right? If we were to say peace, it'd be like, look, I just need my bills paid, and I'll be fine. I just need so-and-so to just get out of my life. Just, I need my kids to grow up. I mean, we just have all these things that, what it, if it was just an absence of conflict or trouble, wow, this while this is a definition of peace, I don't believe this is what Jesus was talking about here in our passage. This peace that Jesus was talking about means rest, quiet or stillness in your heart and it is not the absence of trouble but it exists in spite of trouble y'all 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 ready y'all ready for this so when when we read okay when the, we we love to teach in context right so we're in john 14 but if you were to read the chapter before that you would understand the motivation behind jesus's words and what he wanted to tell his disciples in john 13 1 um it says that jesus was saying this just for his uh, disciples it says it was just before the passover festival jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the father Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. This sets up this whole discourse that we read about. His whole soul motivation, the ultimate motivation for Jesus' actions, instructions, and comfort that we see in chapters 13 and 14 is because he loved his disciples. In fact, he loved them to the end, knowing he was about to return to the Father. Now check this out, knowing the events that were about to happen knowing that they would be on the verge of falling apart once they saw him get arrested, once they saw him crucified, once they saw him eventually die. He's looking at them like, boy, they don't, they don't even know. They about to go through it. So how can I, what can I do? What can I do to, to give, what can I give them before this all happens so that they don't just fall apart? Well, this is why this verse is so key. We're going to break down John 14, 27. So in John 14, 7, 27, the first thing Jesus says is, peace I leave with you. Come on, peace I leave with you. That's the first thing. You know, this is kind of like our spiritual will call, right? Y'all ever been to a concert? You ever bought tickets? Yeah. You ever got tickets from will call? So will call is typically a place, a ticket window, or an office where items that have been paid for in advance can be picked up. Y'all got that? Items that were paid for in advance can be picked up. Jesus said, I'm leaving peace for you. This is the peace I'm going to give you. It's a gift. I'm going to pay for it in advance. I just need you to just pick it up. This is a spiritual will call. I'm, my peace, I leave with you. I'm going to leave your tickets at the door. I'm going to leave it for you. He was leaving them. Just think about it. 
He walked with them in the body for three years. He always knew what to do. They could always count on Jesus. Anything happened, they just turned to Jesus. Jesus, what are we going to do about this? Jesus, what? He was right here. And he was about to leave them. This should have caused them to have no peace. But Jesus had a plan for that. Jesus had a plan for that. Do you think, my brothers and sisters, that Jesus has left you without a plan? Think about everything you're going through, all that you're going through, all you've been through. Do you think Jesus left you without a plan? Do you think he just left you high and dry? Do you think, look how he was looking at his disciples like, boy, they about, they don't even know. They don't even know. You ever look back at uh, old pictures of yourself when you're a teenager and you're like, oh, poor little thing. She didn't even know. Woo! If you only knew what you was about, or you know, the, the person that you met that you shouldn't have met, you're like, ooh, I wish I would have just ran. The moment I saw, I wish somebody would have just told me to run at that moment. You didn't know. You didn't know. You look back on yourself like you had no idea what you was about to go through. That's what Jesus did. Jesus said, peace, peace. I'm leaving you a peace. I'm giving you a gift. I'm leaving your tickets at the door. Number two, this is my favorite part. I could not get over this part. This has been on my heart. I couldn't wait to talk to y'all about it. Number two, Jesus said, it's just not any old kind of peace. He said, my peace I give to you. Come on, sit with that. He said, peace I leave with you. Hold up. We're going to take it up another notch. My peace. My peace. They've seen him in action this whole time they've been with him. Jesus like, you know, my peace. You know, the way I handle things. You know, the way I handle food shortages. Remember that? Yeah, my peace. The way I could just make anything out of it. Remember when we ran out of wine? Yeah, I got that. My peace. Remember how I handle demons? When people come up to me cutting themselves or falling out or pigs running off the cliff, my peace. I, the way I handle things, you know how I handle the haters? The Jewish leaders that, that hated him for no reason because of all the, my peace. Remember how I dealt with the haters? Remember how I dealt with sickness? I'm gonna give you that, you know, you need a healing in your body. Remember how I did the lady would touch the hem of a garment? How I went to the, just said a word and someone was healed? My peace. The way I handle things. You ever see Jesus in a hurry? You ever see Jesus rushing anywhere? You ever see Jesus get rattled? Ready? Read it. I want you to read it. Tell me if I missed it. How I handled the demand of the crowds. How many people got a lot of people pulling on them in your life? You got a lot of, oh, they just, every, every time you look, they need something. Lord. How he handled People pulling on him. My peace. How, this is one I like. How he controlled the weather and how he handled storms. I say this all the time, but how, what was Jesus' posture in a storm? Hey. Calm, cool, and collected. Jesus was on a pillow at the bottom of a boat, and they thought they was about to die. Like, we about to die. You don't even care. Jesus knocked out in the bottom of a boat. My peace. How I handle things. Even how I handle death. Ain't no thing. I, I, I arrived at, at funerals and, and brought people to life. The little widow's son at name. I show up when people don't think I should show up at Lazarus' tomb. Already dead three days. Four days. How he handles death. He said, my peace, y'all. Not just any old peace, my peace. So they saw him. They saw him face trials and confrontations with men and demons and even Satan himself. But he was unflappable. Jesus never wavered. Jesus never let him see him sweat. Jesus handled it. How? Even though he was the son of God, he's fully God. But it had to be some kind of, how'd you do it, Jesus? Well, he had a relationship with the Father. He would get up and he would pray with the Father. You never saw him just out here operating on his own. He had a relationship. He always, he would wake up before everybody get, let me get my time with God. Like, Jesus, with God, what I'm supposed to do with these people? I'm a nerve. We don't know what Jesus talked about. But Jesus, 
himself took time to be with God, had a relationship. That's where that peace came from. Amen? Amen. My peace. Number three. I love this part too. He says, I do not give you as the world gives. Jesus cold. Oh, oh, Jesus, all right. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna give you this peace and I'm not gonna even give it to you like the world gives, which implies that there is a peace that the world can give. It's, it's, impl- it's implied in the story that there is a peace that the world gives, right? Anybody ever experienced that peace? <laughs> the world's peace is circumstantial, right? It, it changes with circumstance. The, yo, yo, when you have the world's peace, the, the way you want to do just like, I just want to get rid of the distressing agent. I want to run away. Quit. If you can't get away, then medicate. Eat. Check out. Go to your idols for comfort. This is the unending cycle of hell. It's the unending cycle of insanity, really. That's how we, it's temporary. There is a peace that's available to you. Oh, they'll give you peace. They'll sell you peace. They'll give it to you. They'll do, but they'll, it'll, it'll be gone. They'll take it right back, snatch it right back. You'll be li- living high and dry. Jesus' peace is altogether different. It's altogether different. It has nothing to do with circumstances. Get that in your mind. It has nothing to do with circumstances. I don't care what you're going, I do care. I don't like when people say, I don't care what you, no, I care. But it doesn't have to do with what you're going through. It's it's bigger than that, it's deeper than that, it's wider than that. This peace pushes through all the disturbing circumstances that life can throw at you. It gives you the ability to endure and become even in the face of extreme turmoil. This peace doesn't eliminate conflict or trouble. Please hear me about this. It doesn't eliminate it, but it gives you the ability to go through it. I think we got the wrong idea when we come down the aisle. I think we got a wrong idea when we give our lives to Jesus. I think sometimes it's been sold to us in the wrong way. Like if I give my life to Jesus, everything's going to be amazing. All my problems and worries will be gone. Joy and peace unspeakable. And that's going to be the end of the story. I think we, we, we hear it the wrong way. Because, you know, Jesus was very clear. Jesus pulled no punches. He had no false advertising. She was like, are you going to follow me? Pick up your cross. He made it very clear. He's like, in this life, you will have trouble. But be of good cheer. I'm over to come. He's like, I ain't dying. Like, I'm not going to even lie to you. It's going to be hard. You're going to have to die to yourself. You have to pick up some things. You're going to put down some things. You're going to have to follow me. You're going to have to lay down your wheel. He's like, no, 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 but it doesn't make life conflict free. Where do we get this idea? If I be good, God will make everything right. If I follow all the rules, I won't have any pain or trouble. If I do everything the right way, no one will die. If I do it all right and I won't get sick in my body, where do we get this? Because Jesus never said that. Consider, um, it, consider this piece of inner confidence that you know that you know, that you know, that you know, God will come through in a situation. Come on, I'm going to say that again. This peace is an inner confidence that you know, that you know, that you know that God will come through. And that removes fear and worry. And it replaces it with the peace of God. How many need that in a life? I need it. This is other levels. This is level. This is leveling up. Number four. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Jesus says so much in this one verse. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Now check this part out. This is the part that you have agency over. See, you can't control the other stuff. You can't control people. You can't control circumstances. We can't control what happened in Buffalo. We can't control anything. We can't control other people. But this one part right here, Don't let your hearts be troubled. That's the part you have ownership over. That's the part you have in the agency of your heart. You have direct control over your heart. 
You have direct control to be like, you know what? Okay, 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 I, I, okay. I've been down this road before. Seen God come through time and time again. I'm, I'm still here. I'm still living. Perhaps God will do it again. Perhaps God will provide again. He always does and always will. So this is the part that we own. God, I'm not going to let my heart be troubled. What the, the base of what, why we're so troubled is because we're scared that God won't come through for us. We're scared of disappointment. Yes, we do get disappointed sometimes because a lot of times our will is not lined up to God's will. Our ways, I said, her, his ways are higher than ours. Sometimes we think in one thing, we're doing this right, God? God's like, no, actually, it's another way. But you'll understand it later. Don't trip. And we still pouting like, but I want it in my way. Right? Don't let your heart be troubled. And then number five, and this is the last thing, Jesus broke this down. Not only not be troubled and do not be afraid. Jesus, what are we doing, Savior? Don't be troubled and don't be afraid. I mean, wow. It's freeing. It's freeing that Jesus made this command. Because it's a command. He commanded it. He said, do not be afraid. Don't be afraid. What are you scared of? What you doing? Do you know who I am? It, it is as though uh, Mike Tyson had a son that went to school every day and got beat up. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine if Mike Tyson had a son and every day he got bullied, he got picked on, he got beat up? He got ran out of school. Mike Tyson's son, what would you say to that little baby? Do you, do you know who your daddy is? <laughs> you don't tell these kids who your dad is and stop. But that's us. We're the little kid who goes to school every day and get beat up by the devil and goes home crying. When we don't realize who our dad is, who our parent is. Do you understand who my dad, that's why we said I'm living in the overflow. There's more than enough. There's more than, you know who I serve? Do you know who's behind me? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of the future. Don't be afraid of what, if I have a job, will I have money? Who will I marry? All these things are what makes us so anxious. Jesus said, Jesus said, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. So how is Jesus' peace different from the world's peace? The answer to this question is very simple. The peace that the world gives depends mostly on circumstances. We talk about that. When everything lines up, when life is good, and when there's no problems. Is that true? We be feeling good when it's like that. Most time we stop coming to church when I'm just going to be honest. When it's all lined up, Sunday get a little booked. Just saying, that's a side. That was for free. This is when a, a measure of peace comes. We feeling good. But we always kind of got that thing like, I hope, you know, the shoe, the shoe don't fall. We always kind of got that in the back of our mind. Peace by the world standard is simply absence of any problems, disturbances, inconveniences, this is what we call outer peace. Y'all flowing with me? The peace that Jesus gives is far different than that. It's not dependent on circumstances, like we said. This peace flows in the midst of persecution. It flows in the midst of trouble. It flows in the midst of disappointment. It flows in confusion and anxiety. It's actually at its best when you're in those situations. What did Paul say? When I am weak, then I'm sorry. I, that, I will boast in my weaknesses. I'll be even more. You know what? Yeah, you're right. I'm, I messed up on that. Yeah, you know, I do do that a lot. But that's where Jesus shines the best. Jesus recognizes that he would not, he's not always going to remove the challenging situations from your life. Y'all know that? Just like if you're a parent, you don't always stop your kid from struggling when they're learning how to walk. Or let me move that out the way. Or let me make it real smooth for you. Why do they need those challenges and obstacles? Make them strong and make them learn. Make you stronger. 
Challenges, obstacles, difficulties build muscle, make you strong. So God doesn't always remove those things out of your life. He never promised he would do that. So if you've been told that, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm sorry to break it to you. But he's not going to do it. But what he did promise is that in spite of the situations of life, he'll give you peace. No matter what you are going through in life, you have a promise, a bona fide guarantee from God that you can experience the peace of God. There's an old song that the old folks used to sing. This joy I have. World didn't give it to me. No, this joy that I have, yeah. World didn't give it to me. This joy that I have. World didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it. World can't take it away. Then you can substitute peace. It's like 50 verses to that. Then I... The world didn't give it to me, this peace that I have. The world didn't give it to me, this peace that I have. The world didn't give it to me, what? The world didn't give it, the world can't take it away. Hallelujah. Something about them, them old folks knew something. Oh, uh, we thought we all fancy and faint, all got newfangled. But them old folks knew. There's something that Jesus can give you that the world can't take away. If you don't get anything else, just remember this. The the difference in peace for the believer and the non-believer is that where they acquire their peace from. That's the only difference. Where is where is where they get their peace. Because the world gives peace, but it's temporary. The non-believer is dependent on worldly methods to find peace. They depend on themselves or their own resources around them. However, believers can find peace that is not from the world, but from God. So how can we accept the peace of Jesus? And we wrapping up. Paul said to the church in Philippi, which Lauren already hit on, um, about in Philippians 4. Philippians 4, 7, 6, and 7. He outlined the secret to obtaining lasting peace that Jesus made available for us. It says, do not be anxious about some things. Oh, I did, I, did I, I mean a typo? Oh, do not be anxious about like stuff that, no, it say, okay. Do not be anxious about anything. Are you sure that says anything? All right, do not be anxious about anything, but in, uh, you know, just some situations. Like only when, you know, stuff that you can handle. Yeah, that baby want to preach. Come on. Yes. Yes. I'm here for it. Love it. But in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Woo, sit in that for a minute. Sit in that for a minute, because the word of God can speak to you better than I ever can. The part that gets me is the, the transcends all understanding. That's, that's where I'm stuck. Because when you go through life, there will be moments of anxiety and worry and nervousness and fear. But Jesus does not want you living in anxiety. So he offers you a remedy for it. He offers you peace. The peace that passes all understanding. I don't know if anyone has ever experienced this peace before. Have anyone ever experienced this? This peace that makes no sense. The peace that holds you and people are looking at you literally crazy like you just went through and you, how are you here? How did you show up? How are you smiling? How are you functioning right now? And I can't explain. I, I best, I, I meant to put, get a picture of y'all. Y'all can see a picture of me and my mom. But she had that look that Jesus looked when it was like, oh, poor little baby. She don't even know. I got, I, but 
I feel like that's the peace I had when my mom passed away when I was 17 years old. I still don't understand how I made it through that situation. I, I have no, I don't understand how God held me so amazingly. Like, like I have no, I can't explain to you the peace that passed understanding where I don't look like what I've been through. I can't, un- I can't explain that. It's a peace. It's a peace that held me when I should have lost my mind. It's a peace that held me when I should have gone to jail over somebody. It's that peace. The peace you can't really explain. You can't really put it into words, but you can feel it. It's the thing that you know that God is real. You know that you know that you know that you know. Because nobody else, no drug, no sex, no people could have filled this void. It was the peace. It passes all understanding. The path to receiving this peace comes from giving every situation to God in prayer. When you do this, look, check this out. God's peace crowds out all the anxiety in your life. In fact, this verse literally means that peace will stand guard and watch over your mind, fighting back and keeping out all potential feelings of anxiety. Come on, how many need peace to go to work for you? Peace need to square up and be like, yeah, no, not here, player. Keep it moving. Negative thought. No, no, you got to go. Let's go. No. Oh, who said what? Who said what? Oh, okay. I thought so. Y'all got to get a gangster peace in your heart. Y'all be letting that. We be letting the devil punk us way too much. That peace better stand guard like an umpire or a hockey goal or a soccer goalie. Like you got to know, not today. This is what this peace does. It's an active peace. It's a living peace. Why? Because peace is a person. Peace is a person. His name is Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Come on, peace is a person. This peace doesn't mean that the situation will resolve or dissipate. Y'all, I'm giving you all the caveats to the, you know, like, just, look, all the fine print, I'm throwing it in right now. So you can... If you're getting into this Christianity walk, you got to know. Things won't always resolve or dissipate. In fact, I'm going to tell you something that most people won't tell you. In fact, the situation might get worse. Anybody experience that? You crying on the altar, you praying, you Lord Jesus, help, and fasting the Lord. And then it got the nerve to get worse. You're like, nah, I know I just prayed and I, <laughs> I know I did, I fasted all day. And it still didn't, it might get, I'm gonna tell you the truth. Situations might not resolve or dissipate. In fact, they could even get worse. Yet, regardless of what happens, if you follow this instruction to give it God and pr- to give it to God in prayer, you will experience this peace. And when this peace arrives, the need to be troubled or afraid, it departs. Now, I wish I could tell you that it's a magic wand and you just say, as an abracadabra, and there you have peace. But you have to practice this peace. Amen? Anything you want to do good or better in life, you need to practice. Practice? Practice. You have to practice. Anything in your life that you want to get better at, you have to practice. You have to practice this piece. It's an active thing. It's not a passive thing. It's not something that just falls on you. Can you lay hands on me, preacher, and then let the peace of God just fall on me? No, I don't know at all. It don't work like that. This is something you have to rehearse. You have to rehearse the word of God to yourself. You have to rehearse not saying let, letting those negative things into your life. You have to replace that with scripture. You have to replace that with prayer. You have to walk in it like, no, not today. No, I'm walking in the peace of God. No, I trust God. No, I know this bill is coming, but I'm just going to rely on God. I'm going to receive the peace that Jesus, I'm going to experience for myself. You have to be an active participant. You have to be intentional about this peace. So this is how. Jesus wants us to experience a peace of his love. Amen. We can have a peace of his love through the peace of God. So we just have a couple of reflection questions for you to think about. 
We're going to have a time coming up in the future where we're going to, when we have our discussion questions, that you'll be able to turn to the person who's sitting next to you, and we'll be able to talk about it for a little while. All right, so that's coming up in the future. We're going to have these times where we could discuss among ourselves and ask questions and be like, well, what do you think? Because a lot of this is just us talking to you, but we want to hear what you think sometimes, right? Amen. So discussion questions or reflection questions. Have you ever wondered what the peace of Christ is and how do you describe it? That's something just to sit with. Number two, is your heart troubled by chaos swarming around you? What would peace look and feel like to you? Think about it. Number three, what does your synthetic or artificial or counterfeit peace look like? What do you do to turn to instead of the peace of Christ? These are just things to sit on. We can have some um, lovely um, holy music that will make people feel uh, really spiritual uh, in the moment. Um, <laughs> But we want you to just think about these things. See, it works. I told you. Y'all feel spiritual now, huh? Take some time and think about the peace of God in your life. Jesus is so good that he looks at us just the way he looked at the disciples. Man. Earth is ghetto. <laughs> they about to go through it. Life is going to happen to all of the rain falls on the just as well as the unjust. But I got something for you. You don't have to be dismayed. You don't have to walk around anxious. You don't have to walk around um, hopeless. I got something for you. All you got to do is accept it. All you got to do is believe in it. All you got to do is trust me. That's a tall order, I know. But that's why we have to practice it every day. Every day you wake up and say, God, I'm going to trust you. God, I want to experience that peace that you promised to give. God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start surrounding my script, myself with scriptures. Everyone has Google. Look up, Google's for, or look up scriptures for peace. Say them to yourself. God, this is what I'm speaking over in my life. I'm tired. I'm not wasting any more time living all balled up and nervous and anxious. That, I'm, not, I'm done with that life. I'm ready to live life and live it more abundantly. I'm ready to live. I want things just to be able to bounce off me. I want to live in a way where I'm just walking in peace and in joy. I'm done with that old life. So if that's you, come on, let's just stand all together. We're just going to pray over you. I know you got things coming up in your life. I know some people are wrestling with jobs. Some people have relationships. Some people have healings that they're looking, they're seeking for. Us. There's financial problems. There's direction. You're wondering what's going on with your life, your future. How about we just cast all those things on the Lord today? Right? Hallelujah. So, Lord, we bring these things before you. God, we come. You said if you cast our cares on you because you care for us. So, God, we're coming and we're laying down all our burdens before you. Come on, think about that thing that has taken your, your mind, that the, the, the thing that you're wrestling with. And let's just make a determination in our spirit that we're going to give it to God. That we are going to exchange it for the peace that Jesus left for us. Not just any old peace. Jesus said, my peace. So God, we pray that you will let your peace rest upon us. All we got to do is receive it. All we got to do is pick it up. It's already been paid for. Come on, will you pick up the peace that Jesus already paid for you? God, we pick it up. God, I say I want it. I want to live in that peace. God, I want to be just like that mother bird when all the storm is going all around me, that I could just sit and be able to be calm and be able to withstand the storm. Why? Because you're with me. Hallelujah. Someone needs to know that today, that God is with you. 
Jesus is with you. Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. God will not abandon you. No matter what you're going through, God is with you. Jesus is here to comfort you. And Jesus will make you through it. He'll see you through the other side of it. So God, we lay it down before you. We accept your peace. We accept your peace. Come on, will you say that? God, I accept your peace. I accept your peace. I pick it up. I pick up. God, I want your peace. It's your peace I want. I want your peace. I want your peace. I'm tired of doing it my way. I'm tired of medicating it. I'm tired of putting all these things into this void. God, I want your peace. God, I want your peace. God, I want your peace. And so now we thank you for it. So a lot of times we spend a posture of, God, please, please, please. But can you just lift your hands and say, God, thank you for the peace. Come on, that's the more precious thing. If you would lift your hand and say, God, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you for it. Thank you for the peace. I believe it. I accept it. And I'm going to intentionally walk into it. I'm going to walk in it every day, God. I'm going to do my best to walk in it, to accept it, to practice it. No preacher is just going to lay a hand on me, but I'm going to walk in it. So, God, we thank you. We thank you. I'm thinking about those who need to experience this peace, but this peace only comes through a relationship. That's like you can't go into any kind of job and be like, can I get that, um, can I get that medical package? they like, no, 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 no. You need to be in relationship with her. We need, to, we need to know you. We need to hire you. You need to be here. You don't get the benefits of a relationship with God without a relationship with God. So if you need a relationship with Jesus today, will you just, re- just in your heart, in your heart, will you just repeat these words and say, Lord Jesus, I need you. I need you. I'm tired of doing it my own way. I want to follow you. I want to know you. I want to establish a relationship with you. And it starts today. So I give you my heart. I give you my mind. I give you my soul. I repent of all my old ways. And I want to do things your way. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that, then welcome to the family. That peace package belongs to you now. So why don't you go ahead and accept it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, let's clap our hands for Jesus. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the Lord of Lords. The bright and morning star. The lily of the valley. That's who he is. Hallelujah. Okay, Mike. Give us one. Oh, I thought that was okay. No, that was Brittany. <laughs> All right, y'all. Thank you for coming to church. Thanks for watching online. Let's keep doing this. Let's make this a thing. Let's like get together every Sunday, like at 10. Like meet me here. It could be a thing. Let's hang out. Online, y'all log on. Share it. Like it. Send it to people. Um, We have so many great things in store coming up in June. Pastor Mike will be here next week. You don't want to miss it. Um, We have Pentecost coming up. We have Father's Day coming up. We got Yana starting back. There's so many things happening. We don't want you to miss it. But we want you to have a very blessed day. You be blessed. I'm just going to pray us out. And um, just, yeah, let the Lord have God's way in your life. God, we thank you for this time. Thank you for community. Thank you for a time of togetherness. Bless us, God. Let us experience you in so many new and living ways. Let us come back with testimonies of how the peace of God kept us all week long. God, we lean into it and we believe it. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and go out and live a blessed life and show people the way. We love you.